to the Reserve Bank of India in its latest financial stability report has sounded caution yet again on the banking sector, raising concerns over bad loans and corporate debt repayment. Indian banks have restructured about 4 lakh crore rupees in loans now, but there is a larger concern cropping up. It's the fact that are multiple lenders exposure to the same corporate uh, to unknown levels, and if a big corporate really defaults, does that lead to a larger systemic failure for the entire sector? Let's try and understand this a bit more. Devakar Gupta, former uh, Indian CFO at State Bank of India, is with us now. Mr. Gupta, good morning and thanks for joining us. I'm going to begin by asking you, is the worst yet to come? The RBI seems to believe that in 2014, our NPLs and NPAs may go further up and any kind of relief may only come in in 2015. What is your own sense? Well, the RBI uh, report states a lot of uh, facts which are an affirmation of what we already know. It gives a couple of positives, namely that the NPA situation today does not pose a systemic risk and uh, the banking sector is capitally, adequately capitalized. And it raises several concerns. Now, what are those concerns? The first concern is that risks to the banking sector have increased. Uh, the second is that large corporate failures run the risk of contagion and significant capital losses. The third risk is that consortia lending uh, arrangements pose a, a great risk. And the fourth risk is that therefore, uh, you know, we, we uh, see a lot of broad-based uh, slippages now as against just very very specific industries or segments in the past. So I think concerns are very real. And uh, again, uh, a large part of these concerns have to do with the prolonged downturn and with the uh, uh, bottlenecks in policy or uh, administration. And therefore, I think uh, it will be uh, uh, not practical to expect a very significant turnaround in just a quarter or two. It will be a little longer mm. before we come out of this uh, problem. Mr. Gupta, I'm going to pick up on one of those points that you also highlighted, which is concerns regarding consortium lending. Or in some cases, you've seen that lenders have been unaware of the kind of collateral that the same corporate has given to them, uh, which in some cases that we've seen in the past has been the same collateral. And now lenders are seen grappling to recover some of their loans. Uh, how deep do you think is this problem where uh, common lenders to the same as, uh, company are unaware of uh, each other's exposure? Well, uh, the problem is not so acute in consortium lending as it is in multiple banking arrangements. Mm -hmm. In consortium lending, uh, all lenders are expected to partake of a particular pie. And therefore, only if some lender comes in without the knowledge of the consortium, you will have a situation of uh, additional uh, lending, which the other banks don't know. This is a problem more to do with multiple lending. But you know, more importantly, while there would be the odd cases where security is impaired and the lenders did not know, or there could be the odd cases where there is an underwriting failure, the large part of problems in consortium lending uh, are with the large, uh, relatively larger exposures. They have to do with an external downturn and the lack of adequate timely response from the consortium lenders to remedy the situation. So I think there is a fair amount of uh, work that needs to be done within the consortium uh, members or multiple uh, lenders to ensure that their response is in real time to a problem. Otherwise, the borrower is in any case in trouble and it's the banker's exposure which risks becoming non-performing. Let's talk about the other part. Currently, uh, banks can lend up to 25% of their total capital to a corporate, while lending to group companies, of course, is limited to about 55%. Uh, Do you think in terms of the kind of exposure or lending norms that we have, we are far behind versus the rest of the world, and a lot more needs to be done in terms of tightening these norms? The global accepted norm is 15% for corporates, 40% for groups. I think those are the limits which operate even today. Now, given the fact that the banking system today is expected to give a very large component of the funding for infrastructure and capex, 
uh, these limits have gone up when projects are in specific sectors and therefore these uh, get stretched to 25 and 55. Now there can always be a debate whether this is too large. Uh, but my sense is that at least today the banking system is not grappling with the after effects of these higher limits. The problems are elsewhere.